The Midwest has a very specific vibe. We're not the cool kids from the coast. We have that quality that some people call adorkable, and most of us lean into it. That makes us pretty easy to spot. If you do these things, you might be a Midwesterner. Number one, it's pop, not soda. Now, there are some pockets in the Midwest where the people insist that it's called soda, but the majority of people in the region say pop, as you can see from this map. I'm from the middle part of Illinois, and I call it pop. I refuse to call it soda. Number two, we swim in lakes, not oceans. Being landlocked, we don't have the luxury of swimming in the ocean and learning how to surf, so we make our own fun. Whether it's a natural lake or a man-made one, we find ways of making it entertaining. Most people know someone who has a pontoon. If not going out on a boat, Midwesterners are fishing, kayaking, or swimming. Number three, we measure distance in minutes instead of miles. Everyone should measure it by how much of their day it's going to take, don't you think? If you live a half mile from your job, but traffic makes it a 40-minute commute, isn't the time the most important factor? Then there's the fact that in the Midwest, the airports are spread out, so to get to one is going to require a drive anyway, so if your destination is only a few hours away, it's just more convenient to drive. So yeah, we measure the minutes instead. Number four, puppy chow was a common childhood treat. And no, we're not chowing down on dog food. There's a chance if you've visited other regions of the U.S., you might have encountered this food by another name. I've heard it called Muddy Buddies. It's Czech cereal coated in peanut butter, chocolate, and powdered sugar. It's super messy, and it'll probably give you a sugar high, but it's worth it. If you grew up calling puppy chow something else, let me know in the comments. Number five, visiting a corn maze around Halloween is a popular activity. Alternatively, an apple orchard or pumpkin patch will also do nicely. We like to experience fall with all the senses, so we get out in nature to smell the crisp air, wander around these areas to feel the brisk wind on our cheeks, visit the gift shops of these locations to taste the locally grown products, and then complain about how winter is right around the corner. Personally, I think that's boring, but a lot of people in the Midwest are into it. Number six, seeing tractors on the highway is normal. So normal that it's actually more of a nuisance. If you're driving during harvest season, there's a pretty good chance that you're gonna see multiple farm implements on the road. The most annoying experience is getting stuck in a no passing zone behind one. It's almost like the farmer is taunting you because it feels like they go even slower then. You couldn't pass even if you could see around the darn thing. Number seven, the weather can shift from summer to winter in one day. I wish this were an exaggeration, but it's not. For example, in my area, it was 76 degrees one day this week, and then within about eight hours, the temperature dropped to the low 40s. Five hours after that, a rainstorm popped up. Tomorrow, there may be snow or a tornado or a thunderstorm. Who really knows? The weather reports are a guess at best. Number eight, that leads me to this. 50 degrees in the fall feels cold, while 50 degrees in spring feels warm. I don't know why, but it really does make a difference what time of year it is. Maybe it's the expectation of summer when you get that first nice day of the year. I just know that as soon as it hit 45 degrees last week, I busted out the sandals. Now, when fall rolls around and it hits 50 degrees, I'll be back to wearing boots and a coat. Number nine, it takes forever to say goodbye. The process requires a lot of steps. There's the part when someone says, I should probably head out. There's the round of hugs, then the standing in the doorway to continue the previous conversation, second round of hugs, standing on the lawn for a new topic of conversation, the slow dawdle to the car, and then the final round of hugs. Now, this is a personal process. Some people will add or remove steps depending on their mood and personality type, but saying goodbye is going to take a good bit of time, so just make sure to factor that into the schedule when spending time with a Midwesterner. Number 10, fall equals football season. Most of the Midwest is Big Ten country, and the rivalries are fierce. In my neck of the woods, it's all about the Illini from the University of Illinois. Game day in Champaign-Urbana is insane. It's a sea of pedestrians in orange and blue blocking intersections and overly full restaurants. It's just a madhouse. In other parts of the Midwest, the people might be rooting for the Michigan Wolverines, the Nebraska Cornhuskers, or the Ohio State Buckeyes, just to name a few, and they take it very seriously. Number 11. We don't have lollipops. We have suckers. I don't think I've heard anyone in real life say lollipop. I've heard it on TV, and I always thought that was weird. In fact, I didn't know what a lollapalooza was until the festival began. Speaking of suckers, does anyone remember pucker suckers? They were square-shaped and sour. They were available in my area in the early to mid-90s. They were the best, but I think they stopped making them. Number 12. Wearing a proper Halloween costume is impossible. Some of the most common costumes are the sexy take on different professions like sexy nurse, sexy cop, sexy firefighter, so on. But it's really hard to be sexy anything underneath a parka. In the southern parts of the Midwest, like where I'm from, 
Halloween can be anywhere from 10 degrees to 60 degrees. You just never know. More often than not, it rains. The northern states, though, they have to contend with the possibility of snow and sub-zero temps. Even if your costume fully covers you, like, say, a superhero costume, you'd still have to cover it up to stay warm. I mean, I guess everyone could dress up like the Michelin Man or the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man, but that wouldn't be much fun. Number 13. State and county fairs are a big deal. Entertainment options in the rural areas are few and far between, so state and county fairs are events people look forward to for months. Specialty festivals also fit into this. Central Illinois residents go crazy for Bagel Fest, the Broomcorn Festival, Strawberry Festival, Cheese Festival. You get the point. If not for these events, the only way to experience a carnival or amusement park experience would be to take a road trip. Number 14. Wedding photos and high school graduation pictures are commonly taken in a cornfield. I wish this were something I was making up, but it's not. I have a professional photographer in my family, and a good percentage of her portfolio consists of people in cornfields for all sorts of momentous occasions. Personally, I'm trying to get away from the corn, so I don't get it. There is a reason why my channel name is Stuck in the Cornfield. Number 15. We have two seasons, winter and construction. Winter weather starts around the end of October and runs until around the middle or end of March. That's when the road crews head out and cause chaos on the highways. And if you pay close enough attention, you'll start to see that they're just working on the same patch of road year after year. How are they never done? I don't get it. Anyone who has driven on I-70 from Indianapolis to St. Louis knows what I'm talking about. Just go ahead and add in additional time for your drive because there's going to be construction somewhere. Number 16. You or someone you know participated in 4-H, excluding the city dwellers of the region, of course. That same person may also have participated in FFA, Future Farmers of America. Both are a big deal in the really rural areas. Students enter their cow, pig, or other livestock at the county fair to win prizes. You can go up to the animals and pet them, or you can buy a raffle ticket to win its carcass after it's been slaughtered. Good times. Number 17. You yell padiddle when you see a car with a headlight out. The first one to yell, it wins. Another take on the game is slug bug, where if you see a yellow VW Beetle, you have to yell slug bug and punch another passenger. Did I mention that we don't have many entertainment options in the Midwest? Number 18. You pay more attention to deer than other drivers. I don't know about the deer in other parts of the country, but in the Midwest, they're on a kamikaze mission to take out cars. They hide until you get right up on them, and then they pounce. Sometimes they go out in groups. One will distract you, while another one takes a leap at you. Strangely, though, they're never around when you want them to be. I've been trying to hit a deer for a while, but I can never find one. Mama wants a new car. What other things do Midwesterners do that seem strange to people from other parts of the country? Let me know. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it so more people will find it. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I remain stuck in the current field.